Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, this fifth episode of uh, Meet to Mentor Closure Study Group. Uh, so today we're going to cover doing some test-driven development in Closure. Ideally, you'd write uh, like a test-first driven approach. Um, that's usually the most common approach for uh, pro like proper TDD test-driven development. So we're going to do some of that today. I'm just going to work through an example uh, that we kind of started to uh, describe how to solve um, <clears throat> last week, which was the Clax Messenger. <clears throat> so this is a video from last week, um, which is in the channel. And so basically walked over, so you can skip over to uh, 43 minutes and you can see what we covered last week. So basically we have this uh, map which, uh, the, so basically we have this Clax messaging system, <clears throat> which, we'll, um, which we'll go through. So we'll build this, but we'll do this in a TDD approach. Uh, just before we get started, I just want to mention that um, today is the 1st of December, and <clears throat> every year there's the this uh, Advent of Code coding challenge. Uh, so there's uh, an Advent of Code website. So every, around about five o'clock uh, UK time, um, like 12 noon uh, US time, I think it's released. Um, and uh, you've got the admin occurred. Oh, actually, no, it must be 12 midnight. So it's already released. So there's the first uh, challenge for today. So every day there's a, a challenge you have to go and solve. So it's, it's quite a fun little exercise. And, um, I'm going to try and uh, attempt solving these in Clojure and um, publishing the results. So we'll cover some of these in the future uh, future broadcasts. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so obviously, as it's an advent calendar, there's one every uh, every day to solve. So it should give you plenty of things, plenty of chances to practice closure or whatever language you want to. You don't have to do it in closure if you don't want to. But yes, so Tim Pote uh, announced he's going to live stream uh, the solutions of the Advent Code every day. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so this is at 12 noon. So this is like a, a UTC time. So like uh, five o'clock in the afternoon, uh, UK or UTC time. And so they'll be using Twitch to be able to stream their uh, uh, their solutions. If you haven't used Twitch, it's it's kind of like a yeah, it's a broadcasting channel where you can watch people either live hacking. A lot of people play video games and so on on this as well. And uh, he's got an example video up there, so you can go in and watch them live and ask questions, or you can just watch them afterwards. And hopefully, you've had a chance to uh, have a little play with uh, and and try out like solving some of the. Uh, examples before you actually go and watch the videos. I think you get the most most out of it before then. And there's also somebody else is also doing, is going to be publishing their solutions, but they're going to be using, uh, they're called it Advent of Spec, because they're going to use the closure.spec to, to validate uh, their solutions as well. Um, so there's something called the Speculative uh, Project, which has uh, spec specifications for the closure core. Um, so that'll be quite interesting to follow as well. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's do some coding. Well, actually, let's just think about the problem first before we dive into the coding. So let's just recap what the uh, the problem space is. So we've got the Clax interpreter. So we have um, so the idea in the in the book in the book by Terry Pratchett uh, called I think it's Going Postal, but I think it's also mentioned in the Fifth Elephant. These are, these are excellent books to read if you like a bit of a, uh, comedic uh, fantasy. Uh, really good, uh, fun books. Also, uh, interesting commentary on uh, the uh, the human condition as well. Uh, but all good fun. Uh, so, in these books, uh, there is this uh, system called the Clax. Uh, so, previously, uh, people have been sending messages by a horse. They handwritten messages uh, across the continent, and in the Clax world, Clax world, then. Um, uh, they can send messages much faster at the speed, well, not of the speed of light, but at the, at the speed of using light. They have these clax towers, which <coughs> basically relay messages across from each other. And they use uh, light patterns to be able to uh, send the messages. So it's a bit like a uh, like semaphore or a, or a telegram kind of thing. You're, you're sending, or Moscow, you're sending a, a 
pattern to represent each character of the message. Um, <clears throat> and then that's passed all the way through uh, the, um, uh, the continent. So the message gets to the other side and then somebody will decode the light pattern. So in order to do, uh, have this kind of system, we need to, uh, if we're going to build this enclosure, we need to uh, encode the alphabet. Uh, and so we've got a guide here what the alphabet is. So we just need some way to represent these, uh, <coughs> these light patterns for each, uh, for each character. And then we will uh, uh, yeah, create a, 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 some functions to be able to encode and decode a message. Uh, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so switch to my closure editor, which today, surprisingly not, will be uh, SpaceMax. Let's see, there we go. So we've got, uh, you've got Emacs up and running. I've created a project. So I've just basically done uh, line new uh, Clax project. So just in the command line, I just did line new and uh, Clax. I don't do anything particularly uh, different there. I just updated the uh, some of the documentation on this as well. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so we've got our source code here, which just basically has a namespace. I've deleted the uh, the example function from here, so we don't have any functions in this namespace yet. Then we've also got the uh, test uh, namespace. So this is in parallel to the uh, source namespace and uh, it's uh, basically just is the same uh, file name except it's got instead of core it's core.test and we're including uh, closure.test um, we're just including all uh, and then we're uh, including the clax.core which is our source code and we're just referring that all as well and I've written some suggestions for the tests we actually want to write. Uh, okay, so we've got everything we need to get started. Um, do we have a REPL running? Good question. Uh, no, we haven't got a REPL running. So I'm going to start my REPL. Uh, so that's up and running. And then switch back to the test thing there. I'm using a golden ratio, so you might see the windows change size a little bit. Uh, it just makes it easier uh, when we're broadcasting for you to see the text, hopefully. If it does get too confusing, let me know in the chat. Uh, thank you. OK, let's get on. So how do we write a test? And what's the first test we're going to write? So we've got this test for alphabet. OK, so let's write a def test. Uh, Use the uh, snippet test, dev test. Oh, let's use test. There we go. So we're going to use the alphabet to be able to essentially just look up characters so we can yeah, encode each character one at a time. Uh, so we need to see if there's an alphabet there uh, or that we can use. So we, we want to have like a key value pair. Uh, so we can test whether it's uh, a collection of it. Um, and then there's no alphabets to be found yet. Go back to the source code and def alphabet. Just so that the uh, code will actually compile. And so let's uh, let's evaluate this. Evaluate namespace and evaluate the uh, alphabet. So that's in the REPL now. It's loaded into the REPL. So uh, alphabet should be recognized now. Oops. Let's evaluate the namespace and let's evaluate this. And so now I can run the test. So this is going to be a failing test. And we can run the test just by opening up the closure menu with comma. And uh, there's a test section. And then there's a run all tests, which is a dev test has is a function that collects, uh, that sort of groups uh, a whole bunch of assertions. So in unit testing, so in other frameworks like Java, you've got, um, you've got uh, an assert and assert type uh, for, uh, method calls you call in 
closure uh, with closure test, you're using the is as your assertion. So you can have multiple is functions. Uh, and then so you're saying is something true, is something false, etc., etc. So here we're saying is um, is it true that uh, this collection is 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 an, uh, so the alphabet is a collection? So I just need to do that. So I don't need equals because if we do call, I imagine call return true. Let's just check what that does. So I'm going to open the docs for call. So I'm going to do oops no. So open the closure menu uh, with comma uh, h for documentation h for help and then h for cider doc and so yes that's going to return true if it's uh if it's an i persistent collection oh yeah so there's also map which is probably the more specific one we want if we're going to use a map if we're going to use a vector etc 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 but it will work towards that so i'm just going to queue out of that so is uh so if we reevaluate test and then we run the tests again uh, And so it's still failing. So yeah, it's basically returning um, so the the not of that. So it's actually returning false um, that uh, call uh, is uh, uh, the alphabet is not collection. Okay, um, so we can make that pass quite easily. Uh, so let's go back to the uh, source code, and instead of alphabet being nil. We could just change that to a we could use a vector. We'd have to know what the index was of every single uh, number, or sorry, every single letter in the alphabet, which seems a bit um, yeah redundant. Could use we could use a simple vector, but if we use a map instead, we can just look up um, look at the the letter in the alphabet and get the results of what the pattern is that represents it so it's it's, it's very much like the alpha, the ascii code generator we wrote uh, last week so map we can just define with curly brackets <clears throat> uh, we don't have to put anything in the map and to be for it to be a legal map um, we do need to redefine it so that the uh, repo has it up to date which we'll save the file <clears throat> And we've got uh, sort of, uh, the results are uh, green. Um, and that's, that's the test report. So we've run one uh, assertion in one test function, and we get a pass. Yay. So that's a good start. Then reevaluate with that. Test. I guess we want to save. It's still passing. So that's good. Uh, uh, so we are, we do have a map. Uh, so if we did accidentally change it to something else, then this test would fail. Is the alphabet, does it contain anything? Uh, so let's see. Uh, so we can write multiple assertions, Just write multiple uh, is statements. Is empty, I don't want alphabet, so we uh, So is it empty? So what does empty do? So space, nope. So let's just get documentation of that. So actually what we what we want. Let's look at not empty. If call is empty returns nil else return collection. Oh yeah. So I think we use empty uh, then rather than use not empty, which does something quite different, it'll actually return nil. Uh, so we can treat nil as false. Uh, so in that case it would kind of it would make our test fail, which is what we want. But when test passes, it's not going to just return true. It's going to return the actual collection. So rather than do that, we can put in something around empty. We can put uh, another function and just invert it. So we can just do not, or there's also a complement, which that, so this will, yeah, returns true if X is a logical false, false otherwise. So if it is empty, then we uh, we return false through the through the not so space k s. So then our test fails unless unless um, we've got some values in the the map. Okay, let's test if that works. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so we've got a failure. Yeah, our alphabet is empty. If we do accidentally delete everything from our alphabet, then this test will pick it up. Uh, so we could group the tests, the assertions in the test by using this testing function. So I've just create a line above, capital O, testing. 
So we can create a, uh, a wrapper around our assertions just to group them together and give them some context about why, why we're running those tests. Again, this makes it quite useful for when you're actually uh, refactoring uh, or reviewing your tests with other people. So why did you write that test in the first place? If you can't remember, then you've described uh, what you, the, like the purpose of these tests. So let's just include that test and that test. So it's just pulling those into the testing. Uh, and it's still failing, but it's still working. So we still get the same results as we were before. OK, that's good. Um, and so if we make that test pass, let's go into the alphabet and let's put something in there. So let's do a, a let's put in the value as a string. It seems to be the easiest way to put in a, a number. So let's switch back to yeah, there we go. And then A is well, A is a light pattern with six um, six possible uh, parts to it, and so uh, we can represent that fairly easily with uh, ones and zeros because the light is going to be on or off. So A could be uh, zero one zero 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 one. We could do it that way. Zero one zero 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 one. So that's A, uh, we've def uh, evaluate that. So now if we run our tests, we should hopefully have them passed. There it is, we run two assertions. So down the bottom it shows you, let's open the, the uh, um, two passed, yeah. So I've run two assertions in one, one test function. So this is the kind of grouping we've got. So we've got two passed. Um, let's actually test some conversion. So we're going to add uh, testing. We're going to add no testing uh, section. Uh, so now we can test the, the notation. You see if we actually convert between the alphabet and the class representation. So how are we going to do that? Uh, let's see. So we want an assertion. Uh, we could just do a simple equals the equal to zero one zero 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 one. Now we need some kind of function to be able to do the conversion. So let's do a character to clax. And we'll need a an argument. Oh, and I'll need to put this into uh, a function call, obviously. We need to pass it an argument. So let's pass it the character. So let's pass it uh, a. So let's just add a f. There we go. So we call it <coughs> character X. We have documentation as we go along. <coughs> uh, and then it's going to take a character. Uh, and then we need to uh, figure out how to actually get that from there. So uh, uh, if I, rather than doing that, I can, uh, I can just return character. Let's see what that's. Uh, now, and so if I do this, it's just going to turn whatever I passed into it. So it's not actually doing any conversion yet. So I'm in uh, the project. So you can see I've got a source tree with uh, with the, core, the test, which is this underscore core test. Do line test. Um, OK, so that's running. Uh, so it's run uh, one test containing three assertions, and we've got one failure. So that's running correctly. When we run the assertion, is this pattern equal to calling clax with A? Then we're actually getting, we're not actually getting uh, the right value back. So we're getting uh, that pattern equal to A, and obviously that doesn't uh, that doesn't equal. So we've got a failing test there. So that's working. So we're getting the same results here as we were doing on the command line. Um, and there's also other test runners as well. Uh, so there's also some called EF test from Weavejester, which is quite nice. So now we've got our uh, test failing and, and well, running uh, correctly, but failing. I have to go and fix it as well. So instead of, uh, instead of clax, uh, just returning the character, then we need to work out how to get that from there. So last week we covered a lot of uh, examples of how to get things out of maps. So let's change that word to um, to a function call. So we want to be able to get from uh, alphabet from the map, get the character that we've passed in. So it's character. 
to, there we go. So let's run our tests again. Now all our, all our tests are passing. Um, so that's fixed it. So that's giving us the right value. We can also see this in the REPL. So if we value, just evaluate the call to that, we can actually see it's just returning the actual value itself as well. The way. So we can just test it in the REPL as well. So here I'm just uh, evaluating code in the source code editor. And typically I usually put these into a comment block. So you can either use the uh, comment uh, function, or I actually prefer just using the hash underscore, which is, uh, is the reader macro way of commenting out things, uh, tests. Uh, but we don't really want to write, uh, yeah, we're not going to write tests for the whole of the alphabet. Um, that would take quite a long time. So we can test that level uh, just by testing out. When we do a, a, like a word or a whole message, it will actually test out all the letters in the alphabet for us as well. So yeah, so adding adding something for every single one would be uh, yeah, it would take a long time to write and be quite brittle tests, I think. So we want a message in here, a message to Clax. We actually want a message. Uh, let's try something simple. We've got um, we've got B and A message of bat. Add T to our alphabet. And that is going to be, so it's one, zero, zero, and then three ones. It doesn't really matter. I mean, we don't have to stick to this alphabet. You can come up with your own alphabet. You could also generate this alphabet like we did with the ASCII code generator last time. If you just wanted to, if you had a, some kind of sequential pattern or some pattern you could just generate, that might make it an easier way to generate all these codes for you as well. We have a function called uh, def message it clacks. Uh, and it's going to take an argument of a message. And then we are going to do something. So for now, we'll just return the message again. Just so we got a failing test. And then we'll work out how to get the message from there. So we'll make the test pass. So I'll run the test again. And so you can see that, yeah, well, we're converting bat. It's actually just returning bat. It's not returning a number. We also have to work out what the message actually is going to look like. If we, how do we represent the message in the clacks? The string, uh, I guess we could have, well, we could have an array of three strings um, work. So, so if we just have one long string, then we have to yeah, split the string each time into separate parts. Whereas if we just actually create it in a uh, three strings in a, in a collection, then that, um, that's a little bit easier to uh, process as we've got more functions that will help us kind of step through those things where we want to, especially when we want to decode it. So that's A. So we want to put in B in before there. So we want uh, B for bat. Paste uh, answer B, A, uh, and then we want a T in here. So that's our Clax equivalent of, uh, of our message bat. So that's the kind of structure we want to get when we when we convert individual characters. We want to basically have a, a vector of the representation of each of those characters uh, as as a clack. So it's still failing, obviously, because we haven't actually done the conversion yet. So let's convert. So we need to uh, go into uh, our max uh, message clacks. So rather than just returning the message, we need some kind of conversion. So we know how to convert from the alphabet to a, a character. So we just need to do that for every every part of the message. Change that. So um, if we map the character clacks function over every single uh, character that's in the string, then that should give us uh, a conversion of the entire string uh, back as a, as a collection. So we do call the map function. Um, and then we want to be able to all character clacks, map character clacks uh, over over the message. So this is going to take uh, character by character out of message because it's going to take it's going to treat the string as a sequence of characters. It's going to pass in turn each uh, character to uh, to this character to clacks conversion. Uh, and um, it will give us back the, hopefully the right results. So let's see if that works. 
And oh, we've got nil, nil, nil. Oh, that's not quite right, is it? Pull that out. Let's have a little experiment. Ripple. So rather than message, see what it does with B. Uh, so that's return nil. Okay, interesting. Oh, ah, yes. Because I'm using, uh, I'm pulling out individual characters. I, I, need, I would need to change them to keywords. Uh, we've got a difference between how we're representing the alphabet and how we're getting that information from it. So if we change this over to uh, to use a string instead or a character instead, then it would actually work a lot better because we're actually looking up the right value in the alphabet. Uh, so rather than having an alphabet like this, and we can alphabet that we use. Uh, uh, let's just so redefine alphabet. So obviously our tests are going to fail, uh, so we'd have to go back and fix them. But um, those are, uh, can we call character with a B instead? Yes, we can. So so that works. Um, so rather than converting backwards and forwards to uh, between keywords as we've uh, as we would have to do in this original map then i just refactored the map here and uh, it's actually uh, a nicer it's a nicer alphabet an easier alphabet to to work with it's out of the way and no on so why uh we moved away from that that's something i can put into the uh design decisions why we why we chose a particular map design over a particular design for the alphabet over something else uh, so that uh, we don't go over the same conversations uh, over again it's all recorded uh, um, to map uh, character clacks over uh, hopefully that gives us the answer that we're looking for it doesn't oh, why is that not working then uh, let's instrument these two things. So you can fire on debugger. The, so I've switched on the debugger and it's going to step me through. So when I call um, function, so it's called uh, message. Uh, and then we give it a message. Let's evaluate this and it should bring up a debugger for me. Yeah. So now we've got at the top, we've got. Um, this debug line, um, which uh, is going to help step through there. So we've got, uh, yes, yeah, so it's giving us the alphabet. So this is what the alphabet is. So we've got A, B, and T. So they're all there in the alphabet. Let's do next. Um, oh, so it's doing character, and that's returning nil. OK, right. That could be our little problem. So we've got character, which is a character. Uh, maybe that needs to be a string. Uh, okay, so we can either change our that's that's helped us figure out what was going wrong there because uh, a character is not obviously matching a string. Uh, if we do um, a string, does that is that the same as uh, let's evaluate that, see what happens? False. So there we've got this. Uh, yes, yeah, so strings are not the same as keyword uh, as characters. So um, if I put around the character, if I put a string around there, slow that in. So now it will pass a character uh, as a string to the alpha when it compares to the when it tries to get something out of the alphabet, and um, it will return uh, our. Uh, hopefully, then it will now match the the right. Uh, a key in the alphabet and return its value. Let's run the test again. There we go. Oh, we've got two failures. Yes, because we're asking for keywords rather than uh, for uh, characters. We just need to update our tests. If we're changing the alphabet. We should have updated our tests as well. That was a bit naughty of me. Uh, okay. Evaluate that. There we go. And save file. Run the tests. Oh, I guess we've got all tests running. There we go. That's the report. Uh, so we've run five sessions, uh, run the five tests. And you can see, so we've got uh, our test messages are now being converted correctly. Uh, and we can double check that in the REPL now as well. Oops. Uh, so we've got our call here, message back. So if you evaluate this, 
I'm um, going to evaluate this and get the answer as a message. So it's basically returning a collection of each of the individual ones. So if we wanted to decode this message, we pretty much just have to do everything back in reverse. When, we, when we're when we decoding the messages uh, and decoding the characters, then um, I actually use the map because you can't look up a, you would have a, uh, a clax value here. And so looking up the value of them, that is going to be tricky. Um, so we need kind of like an inverse copy of this alphabet. So we could actually just define a separate one and just swap all the values around. Um, if we're not generating it, obviously that's going to be a lot of typing. And is that the most effective way to do things? Well, you could, uh, we could define, we could use the existing alphabet uh, and we could do alphabets, uh, clacks, um, and, and basically take the, take the alphabet and just, if we could just somehow uh, reverse alphabet um, is it, uh, in the Clux Messenger here. So you can do a, a reverse map here. So it's basically just taking uh, the first value and the second value as argument. So we, we're doing some destructuring here. So if you pass the, um, you pass, so when we're mapping this function over the alphabet, uh, then we'll take the first element from the, so map takes the first element from the alphabet, which is this. Um, and then we de destructure uh, that uh, uh, set of elements. So it's going to be A is going to be colon A, and B is going to be the, the value it points to. Uh, and then all this function does is just return that back as a collection, but with the, the value swapped. Um, uh, and so M is the map that we're passing in. So we're going to go over basically and create a uh, an inverse of this alphabet, and then we're going to we're using into to basically pull everything into back into a, the shape of a map, so we can use it as a map rather than uh, rather than the vectors we've got here as well. So that's the that's the kind of uh, manual way of doing this. And then afterwards, found a solution here, which is to uh, use the, um, where is it now? Yeah. So we use the alphabet over here. We used a, just a simple def um, to basically create a value that is just the inverse of the map. Rather than implement, rather than implement a function, we can just have inverse alphabet as using this closure.set function, which has got map invert, which seems to be. Uh, yeah, a nice simple way to uh, invert the map. So if we, if we evaluate that, uh, and then um, oh hello kitty, it's kitty time. Uh, hello kitty puss. I'll get some closure later on. Oh, soggy cat. Um, and then we just ev uh, evaluate that. And we see we've got our clacks now as the keys, and our uh, our values are um, our, our actual English letter characters. So we can use this inverted as uh, as our alphabet to our characters, and um, when uh, rather than uh, yeah, and so then it makes writing the uh, clacks to characters a lot easier. And, uh, and the message thing, because we can just use this inverted alphabet rather than the alphabet itself. Um, uh, so I'll leave you to do that. I'll, I'll write this down, but I'll uh, and post the uh, answers in the uh, in the Slack channel and on the meetup. And uh, I'll give you the full solution there so you can go through it. Uh, one of the points is that the, these functions are not entirely pure because they're using a shared uh, value of alphabet here. Um, so what we'll do is also we'll update this to um, to include uh, alphabet as a uh, uh, as an argument. So that makes it uh, a more of a pure function, uh, and so it's very deterministic about what we're actually doing. So then I would just need to uh, 
yeah, update. Um, uh, well, actually, just update. Oh, not from. We just need to update the the call we're doing here. Instead of just calling clax directly with a single argument, we now have to change this to a function call. And we would have to uh, take in character. So we've taken the character from there. So that's the placeholder for each character that we pull from message. Uh, and the uh, the alphabet we actually want to, uh, to use. And so then obviously we'd have to have uh, alphabet uh, as a, an argument here. When we call this, we would call this uh, fax. Uh, and then we pass, pass a message that. And then we'd pass in uh, alphabet um, or alphabet inverted kind of thing, whichever whichever alphabet we actually want to uh, to use. So this allows us to also you know, have several alphabets defined as well, um, and we can even define all those different alphabets in a um, namespace as well. Um, so I'm going to leave it there for now. I'll post the full. Uh, version of this uh, later on this afternoon and I'll add a link to the YouTube and uh, meetup site and the Slacks channel and uh, just a final reminder that um, it's the advent of code as I mentioned at the start of the video uh, so if you want to go and uh, start doing the advent of code the first one's there already and if you want to see somebody else having a go at these things then yeah don't forget to check out Tim Pote uh, doing his streaming uh, during the weekdays at like, tw like five, five o'clock in the afternoon, uh, UK time. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any feedback about what you want to do next, uh, please let me know. I'll publish that the, the, the next session upon here. The initial idea was to do some stuff with data structures and immutability, so you can see how that works. Uh, so there is a YouTube live um, uh, broadcast you can go and subscribe to and just click on the uh, icon and it'll take you to my channel. Um, I'll add that uh, uh, today so you'll be able to do that. And then we got a whole bunch of other things that we can work on over the, the next of the coming weeks, um, including the foreclosure and the advent of code uh, challenges as well. So lots of... Uh, lots of closure coding to do and lots of examples. And thank you very much again for listening. Uh, see you next time.